Let's go ahead and bring Josh Ward in right now. Rebecca saying that she got her craft treats. They are great. That is awesome. Appreciate that. Josh Ward joins us now. Josh, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Doing great. I don't recall you ever having a pet. You ever had a pet? When I did as a kid, uh, as an adult, uh, I have three kids, so they're <laughs> kind of classified that way, but uh, no official pets. We have a battery-operated pet, and we're going to keep it that way for a while. If Josh decides to go to crafttreats.com to give his young wild children some CBD infused craft treats, pet treats, then Max just, would gobble them up. I promise. He, he would, just he used the promo code. Use the <laughs> promo code off the hook, and you get twenty percent off. How about that? Yeah, I might take Max by there this afternoon. <laughs> there you go. Hey, and some love for Josh Ward is the best. Top of the game. There you go. Grand. I agree. I endorse that endorsement. I endorse the endorsement for me. And uh, no relation to John Ward. No, uh, although when I met Al Wilson, that was one of the first things he asked me, and I told him no, no relation, and he told me that I should lie and tell people that I am. So <laughs> the, there are some people that think that I am, and I'm not going to change that. Yeah, and then he dropped uh, probably a few F-bombs and other stuff in there, as Al typically does in conversation. He can be tough to interview on the radio. That darn FCC will get in the way. Uh, well, he he played with a special kind of intensity, so uh, that, that's useful in the right spot. Uh, no word for sure if Josh will change his name to Kessling anytime soon, but I don't think that's going to happen. Can you play four downs with us, Josh, as we talk some Tennessee basketball? It is game day. No. No, he's out. He's good. I'll be happy to. Four downs. Four questions. Four answers. The Dave Hooker Show. Four. 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 Downs. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. Brought to you by AndyMasonRealEstate.com. Go to AndyMasonRealEstate.com. Fill out the form. You're good to go. Contact them. Give them a call and know that you'll have Knoxville's best realtor. Over 40 years of experience in that office. They bring you four downs. Best price. Best service in the biz. And it's not even close. So here we go. First down. And will the griping matter? So we were having the discussion earlier, Josh. All the griping from FAU saying that Tennessee plays uh, Australian rules, football, and that sort of thing. I argued it could affect the refs. Caleb argued that it could actually affect Tennessee, make them even tougher. But ultimately, will it matter? What say you? Ultimately, I don't think that it will matter. If Tennessee goes cold and is not able to hit shots, and FAU is able to hit shots because that's going to be a big part of the plan, take a lot of threes, try to make a good amount of them, that would be what moves FAU on. Now, depending on shooting and all that, we could still hear fans say, yeah, but the officiating. But that would be if Tennessee loses. But I don't think that Tennessee is going to lose because of officiating. So uh, it might change the conversation, the narrative, which is a popular word to use this week, but I don't think it'll change reality. I, I, I do agree with the Tennessee side. This conversation the last few days will help Tennessee lock in. If there's any fear of Tennessee lacking focus because now the Vols are the, the big favorite, I don't think that will be the case. Caleb, you pretty much agree with that assessment, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think this is going to help Tennessee more. I think um... – Josh, uh, I was telling Dave, I think I've told him before, I don't know if you know, I'm a hardcore Memphis Grizzlies fan. And during the grit and grind era, when Blake Griffin was flopping and the Grizzlies were called dirty all the time, Zach Randolph finally one day was like, okay, you guys want us to be, you guys want to call us dirty? I'll give you dirty. And he just started punking Blake Griffin. And Blake Griffin has never been the same since. <laughs> and so I think Tennessee is going to start punking people tonight because they're sick of it. Yeah, I, I think I totally agree with the mindset of this Tennessee basketball team. It's a veteran led team, and I, I, you know, they hit some shots. They scored a good amount of points. Olivia Kemwall, what he was able to do. I think that the conversation that's taken the last, uh, taken place the last few days could be quite insulting to these players. So their mindset should be we'll go show you again what we can do. Yeah, you better be careful with that John Morant cat, too, Caleb. <laughs> Memphis is not the place to try to pretend to be hood. I just try to, I got to tell Ja that. If I could just tell him one on one, like, you don't need to act like that in Memphis. There's some real people. Does, in that, does that mean you're true hood, Caleb? Is that where we're going? No, here? I'm, no, 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 no. I'm okay. not acting that way. And so, okay. 
was starting to say. I thought, uh, by the way, Josh, for the record, is a noted rapper from his high school days. Can we break off a, a bar or two? I think we need to get to second down, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> is it like Max Kellerman rapping? <laughs> no, I've had people come up to me like, no, he really used to do that. And I was like, I always like, lied to me when he was in high school. But no, he, uh, Jaw Ward was the name. That was, right. that was the nickname. You were not wrong. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Didn't like Ja Rule. He's too gravelly. All right, second down. Uh, most important player for the Vols tonight is? Josh, you want to jump in? Uh, I will go Josiah Jordan-James. Uh, we know the players' roles that they have, but I think Josiah, who's slipped off a little bit offensively, at some point is going to be needed to step back up on the offensive end and the way that – FAU shoots the ball from the outside perimeter defense matters. So all those guys out there, May Shag, Vescovy, the way that they defend in the perimeter is going to matter. But I think it will especially be the case for Josiah. Caleb, what do you think? I shouldn't have let Josh go first. He took the word <laughs> right out of my mouth. I mean, uh, Josh, I'm a, uh, Dave hates when I say this, but I'm a law of averages type of guy. And that applies to Josiah Jordan James more than anybody else, which is if he has two bad shooting games, he usually has one really, really good one right after that. And he's had two bad shooting games. So I think he's due for like one of those games where he just goes off from three, which he does almost like in a J.R. Smith way offensively. Like once every five games, he's going to do it. And then I'm with you. His perimeter defense has got to be there. A part of that, too, is dependent on making sure Santiago Vescovi is still hitting his threes. But mm -hmm. if he's hitting his and then Josiah has one of those games, it's a wrap. Tennessee's winning. <laughs> Yeah, and also, so my backup answer would have been Olivier. He has also made it pretty clear if he plays at a high level, Tennessee's team goes to a higher level too. Uh, would the Vols rather uh, face Michigan State or Kansas State in the Elite Eight? <clears throat> I think probably Michigan State because that's another tough physical team, but Tennessee can think, okay, we'll play them at their game and we're better than them. Uh, Kansas State is uh, it is the higher seeded team. Michigan State head to head is the favorite against Kansas State. And my initial thought going into this week was, yeah, you'd probably rather get Kansas State. But if they get by Michigan State, they've already gotten by that kind of style. So I think you'd rather play a team that plays your game not as good as you. Caleb, your thoughts? I'm going to break with Josh on this. I'm actually going to say Kansas State. And the big reason is I think Tennessee's biggest advantage is teams that can't shoot the three. Now, Michigan State doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but they're really efficient. They're top 10 in three-point percentage, and their bigs can shoot three. So Michigan State is that type of team that can go off from three if they need to, and that's the type of team that plays that Tennessee always is vulnerable against. Whereas Kansas State, I mean, they're outside of the top 200 in every three-point category, and so I think Tennessee could have their way with Kansas State. That was third down. Let's get to fourth down. It is a possession snap, so it's important. Is Rick Barnes the best coach in Tennessee history with a win? That would be the Elite Eight. Only Bruce Pearl has done that at Tennessee, so it would match the uh, furthest that Tennessee has gotten in the tournament. Uh, Josh, is Rick Barnes the best coach in UT history with a win? Yes, I think the only thing that has held Rick Barnes back in that conversation is tournament success. You just gave it to him. So he would have multiple Sweet 16s. He would have an Elite Eight run. That's not even considering the opportunity to keep going, which would change the history of the program. So uh, everything that they've done in the regular season, time at number one, time in the top five, it's the, the asterisk has been, okay, well, let's see in the postseason. Well, last year he added an SEC tournament championship for the first time in more than four decades. If he's able to get to the Elite Eight, I don't know what people are going to say negatively about Rick Barnes at Tennessee. Caleb? I'm with Josh and putting him over Bruce Pearl. It's it's hard for me to put him over Ray Mears just because the I put a lot of value on the, on the regular season and unless there's a national championship or final four run. So – if it's an Elite Eight, I got him second to Ray Maris because three SEC regular season titles, I can't look past in there any of Bernie's show. But if he gets to a Final Four, then yeah, I'll have him number one. Yeah, I'm with Caleb on that. I'm a, a Final Four would, would be obviously another level. Um, and Ray Mears did a lot of foundational things for, for Tennessee. And when, when you look at the number of wins, I, I could definitely see it going either way, though, Josh. I, I just wonder for Rick Barnes, and he's never going to admit this, when, when he goes to bed at night and things are quiet and he has an opportunity to think about this season, his career, 
I don't want to put too much on it, but man, some tournament success would make his resume look a lot different. If he could have that this year, the two or three years he's got left to coach, it would make that resume look much, much different. Well, I, you know, to the Tennessee conversation, we can step out. If he gets two more wins, that might secure Hall of Fame status because Rick Barnes has a good case for the Hall of Fame. If he has multiple Final Fours at multiple schools, 20 years apart, to go with all the wins, he's very respected. I mean, Coach K, in praising Tennessee's performance against Duke, made sure to note that Rick Barnes is one of the great coaches in the country. So if if he's able to add another Final Four to his resume, he becomes a Hall of Fame coach, I think. And I, I think he has a good chance to be there. I think he could lock that spot up with two more wins. I kind of thought, yeah, in my mind, and I could be dead wrong, I've already got him in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Caleb, did, would you – if if, if it, the season ended today, would you have him in the Basketball Hall of Fame? I haven't done enough research on it, but I, I think I probably would – but I'm not sure. But I mean, I'm with, I'm with Josh on this. And it's funny because I talked to uh, uh, Dave yesterday about Tom Izzo, Josh. And the funny thing is like, we talk about these amazing coaches in the tournament. Tom Izzo is like the prime. It's like, Oh, he always makes a run. He's got one national title. That's it. And if it wasn't for that 2000 season, we would be talking about Tom Izzo exactly how we talk about Rick Barnes. And it's that one breakthrough year and one breakthrough year changes everything about your narrative as a head coach in college sports. Yeah, it's so hard to do. I mean, Bayheim got one. Dean Smith got a couple. I mean, it, it, it like being Shashevsky, being Jim Calhoun, if you're talking about the NCAA tournament, is so difficult. So uh, it does take one one real chance, and it takes some luck, which also means luck can go against you and cost you that second or even third uh, for some coaches. But you get one, it changes how you're viewed forever. I mean, that's that's in the NCAA tournament. That's for quarterbacks in the NFL. The the position that gets the spotlight, and that is the college basketball head coach. That is the football coach. That is the quarterback position. There are only a few spots where that's the case, but basketball coaches for sure. So Rick Barnes, yeah, I think he's in that Bob Huggins class in terms of accomplishments. He, he's viewed a tier below uh, an Izzo, who is an older coach who's been around for a long time, or Bayheim, who won more games, but he's not that far off. But the difference would be, the amount of Final Fours and a national title. I mean, if Tennessee wins a national title, then Rick Barnes all of a sudden shoots up and joins all those other coaches with multiple Final Fours and a national title to go with all the amount of wins he's racked up at multiple schools. And I didn't think about it when I was there at the time, but I went to the College Basketball Hall of Fame last month, and there wasn't a bit of orange in there. I mean, that I mean, there seriously was not a bit, Josh. I mean, it would be nice to have some representation for Tennessee – in the call and in, in the basketball hall of fame, there's not a college and pro, but I don't remember seeing a bit of. Well, let me take that back. Other than Pat Summit, a ton of Pat Summit on the women's side, but as far as the men's side, I didn't see any orange. Yeah, and that that is Tennessee's placement in basketball history and and the spectacular um, accomplishments would be everything that Pat Summit has done for the game, and and that's of course on the women's side. But that's what I think. If you go around the country and you're trying to associate Tennessee athletics with college basketball, they would shift over to the women's side. There's nothing wrong with that. But the men's side, I I think Bernard King, what he's done, people recognize that, but we're decades removed from what he was able to do. And some may associate him with just his scoring ability and what he had to overcome in the NBA, but maybe not as much with Tennessee. He's one of the great scorers of all time in the history of the sport, but it's been a long time since he's played. So they've had great players come along, Allen Houston and Chris Lofton, and, you know, Ron Slay was the SEC player of the year, was a great player. But in terms of we're talking about Hall of Fame, all-time conversation, Rick Barnes, is he's a couple of weeks away from being able to change that conversation in the favor of the Vols. 